All right guys, there you have it. The window's been trimmed out, but check it out. You can see the nice reflection on that ash. Looks really good. Love that sheen of that finish there. Next on the list is to go ahead and sand this down. So sand it down real good, knock off all this excess Bondo, the high points of it, and just basically have it where it's only showing that nail hole that's filled. So I'll get on that right now. It's gonna be pretty easy for this install, nothing but flat surfaces. So I'll knock that out. So there's the before on how these legs look. You know, I've got the Bondo kind of smeared on there. And then here would be the after. You can see those nail holes are just flush with the surface of the wood now. There's no obstruction there. It's just, I mean, dead flat. Absolutely dead flat. I went through these three pads and you can see they kind of gunk up with that Bondo there. And the final pad after cleaning up all the residue is this kind of soft buff pad. It's just a really fine pad to, as you can see it's got a cushion to it. And that kind of, you know, really just puts a nice finish on it and gets it ready for spraying. Another thing I did is you can see our jam extension here lined up with our actual jam. You can see that's a little distressed there now because I went ahead and sanded that as well. And that is just nice and flat too. Super good there. And part of that was just me installing that as flush as possible when I put that in. So here's a look at what's going on in here. You can see this thing's nice and sanded. The next thing we have to do is mask this whole area off and caulk this thing. So what John has done is he's ran his tape about a 16th of an inch away from what we're gonna spray. We always run our tape first all around the entire project and then we'll run our caulking. Very important if you're gonna do this kind of tape caulking method where you're using the caulking as like a seal to get your paint line. This isn't really necessarily like our final finish line when we're pulling that tape. I probably will have to go back in and cut in some of this, but it's so much easier doing it this way. But if you are gonna use the caulking and the tape, it cannot be elastomeric caulking. So it can't be Big Stretch or Shermax from Sherwin-Williams. It has to be just like an acrylic type that's not gonna stretch because when you peel the tape, you don't want big stretch stretching on you. You want just a nice clean line. So that's a big thing to keep in mind. And we got our stool masked off. We don't want anything on there, obviously, because it is that, uh, it's ash, it's already finished. And essentially at this point, we're ready to spray. So we've sanded this down, filled all holes except for the holes, the install holes here. I'm just gonna plug those later with like ash plugs. I think it'll be kind of a cool contrast. I don't know, just something I was thinking. We'll see how it looks, but yeah, I'm ready to shoot this. This is gonna go really quick. Uh, probably be done spraying this in 30 seconds. Really quick, the prep work, 30 minutes to an hour maybe, and then the paint work, 30 seconds, pretty crazy. So let me grab my sprayer and get this done. And if you guys want us to make a detailed video on how we tape and like get up close and show you that, let me know. We'll definitely make that. We have a ton more painting projects to do here, of course. So let's hit it up. Gotta maintain your equipment. Spoken like a true hypocrite. We just had to buy this $400 brand new gun with the freaking rack X guard and the FFLP tip, super expensive. But inside of this gun, there's a filter. And this is what it looks like when it's completely jacked and cut in half. That is supposed to be see-through right there. And it is full of paint, primer, denatured alcohol, mineral spirits, just build up of junk. So I was having trouble when I tried to spray something last, obviously, because this was in the gun and I couldn't even get it out. I had to like beat the gun apart to get it out and I ended up damaging the gun and cost myself a lot of money. 
stupid mistake. So now that that's over, we got our gun, new one. We can throw our scuff X in the hopper and spray this little window. There's junk in there. You gotta really maintenance that equipment if you wanna spray and I've obviously been neglecting it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to hit up my sides all the way down the edge of my profile and then I'm gonna come in, get this in one swoop like that and then just kinda hit this left and right this one will be left and right, and then I'll hit these up and down, I think. I'm gonna see how this paint, I've only sprayed this one other time, which was in this room. It's a little tricky to remember exactly how paints behave, but I feel like this stuff might be a little bit runny, so I might do it in sessions. All right, here we go. Dang, that's a lot of air coming at me. Oh yeah? Yeah. All right, it's kind of calm right there. Oh, and by the way, we're not priming this. We're just using that Windsor primer that's obviously already on the boards. So you can do that sometimes. It's not the, <laughs> we're fighting this plastic. It's not the highest quality finish, but it's doable. For my laundry room, it's acceptable. If I was doing this for a client, I would definitely put some shellac based bin primer on there, kind of build it out a little bit, sand it back down. Again, my laundry room, I'm fine with it. It's gonna be great. This Scuff X covers really well. All right, I like that. I think I can hit this up. Oh, it's so nice to have a freaking nice sprayer. Okay, that looks good. And we'll do our little, this motion like this. That looks good. get up in there. I let that dry. I missed a spot right there, but if I try to keep going over it, that's how you get runs. You kind of just gotta like be like, all right, you know what? Let it dry a second. I'll come back and get it in like 10 minutes. Um, that's pretty well covered. I think the only thing I missed, I didn't miss, but I didn't get yet, is the casing legs, so. You can probably hit those up. Just gonna hit them up in a straight up and vertical, straight up and down vertical motion. I'm good with that. Okay, so what we're gonna do at this point, we're gonna let this dry. That'll be our first coat. I can see some spots that I missed. Um, I don't want to hit those up right now while everything is still wet. If I do, I will get drips and runs. And that turns this 30 second spraying time into another two hours. Trust me, we've been there. So we'll let it dry, get a look at it. We'll analyze the situation to see what we really missed. And then just, I really just will do two coats on it. I like the build out this paint gives me. And it's just real durable. So. There's coat number one. It's been about 20 minutes since we sprayed this and it is essentially dry as you can see. I can touch it and it's really nice and slick. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go around with this sanding sponge and just kind of look and see if I have any discrepancies that need to be addressed. I have one right here that I can just pass over and this really isn't doing a lot. This is a 3M fine sponge and really this is just Anything we missed in the sanding that took place before the spraying can be addressed by this now. Because remember, we didn't do a prime coat because the winds already had it. 
So it's a little unorthodox doing it this way. Like I mentioned earlier, it's the laundry room, not too, too concerned. But that's the point where I can do this. This is the point. So I'm gonna hit my little spaces up right here and it's as simple as that. And I see like a little bit of debris right here. You can just clean that up a little bit. And that's essentially everything I can see. So everything looks good, feels good. And we will go ahead and now repeat that same process that I did on the first coat. Same exact thing, just doing it the second time and really laying that paint on there, uh, making this thing look good. Looks good. We're kind of getting blasted here because the air is pushing through. And you're always supposed to wear a respirator too, but like I said earlier, I'm a hypocrite. A big hypocrite, like the stuff I talk about in church. Yeah, I like that. And we're going to come up. And right here. Bam, we are done. So there's our second coat for this and we're done. We'll let this dry. I'll peel all this plastic down. We'll take all this tape off our stool here and get a look at this thing. I think it's gonna look awesome. I know it will because these over here look freaking awesome the way they contrast with this green color. And it's just, I mean, I really emphasize learning more than one thing you know i i honestly would call myself kind of like a mediocre carpenter at best trying to get better trying to learn more um but one of the things that i've always thought was like i want to learn at least two things and those two things are carpentry and painting because if i'm going to be doing this stuff in my house i want to finish it i want to know what's all going into it i want to finish the way i want it finished just nice smooth surfaces I want things sprayed and you know I don't have the money to sit there and pay a painter to come do this piece work it's kind of a weird way that I'm doing it as I'm slowly moving through my house here so I need to learn this stuff and I've been doing painting for like 10 years now and it's only made me better so let me go ahead and spray this one more time <laughs> just kidding <laughs> as you come up to John he's right there but yeah, just learning two things that kind of coincide with each other. So what I mean is basically as a carpenter being our main job, we know what goes into the carpentry, right? A lot of carpenters don't know what goes into the painting and I don't really blame them. You don't really need to know all this, but it is helpful because I know how to set the painter up for success that's gonna be coming after me because I do that aspect of the job too. And it's vice versa. If you're the painter, you know how the carpentry should look when it's finished. For example, you know, as the carpenter, I install this with nice crisp lines here. And John as a carpenter too, he knows when he goes and he, he prepped this earlier this morning, he's not gonna put a big glob of caulking on there, like a big, you know, quarter inch, eighth inch bead. He's gonna keep it tight so we still have those crisp lines of how it looked when it was installed. The caulking is just sealing it off and kind of closing up the gaps, right? So just a thought that I always, you know, people always ask me, why do you paint, why do you paint? Well, number one, I wanna be able to paint my own house. And number two, it does make me a better carpenter. I really believe that. So yeah, rant over. We'll see how this thing looks when this is all cleaned up. And I can finally say this room is complete.
which is freaking crazy. I've been in this room for like a year and a half. Freaking horrible. <laughs>